Okay, we have the Earth, and we have an object approaching from the distance of the Moon. And we're given that the velocity when it's at the Moon is V. We ask for the expression when it passes just above the atmosphere of the Earth. Now, there was a lot of speculation among everybody about you know, how you uh, might calculate this using acceleration and velocity functions and so forth. <coughs> Turns out that's way too complicated, unless you are pretty good with line integrals, which is not part of what you, uh, the, the prerequisite for this course, although many students uh, have had multivariable calculus. Uh, that's still a challenging line integral. Okay, it's still a challenging problem, even uh, with that level of preparation. Um, so you really don't want to get into the messy details here. <coughs> so what I tried to do was guide the discussion toward energy considerations, because that makes it very, very easy if you know what you need to know. Um, and if you don't know what you need to know, the idea is that you make a note of it and make sure you know it in two weeks so that you can use it. Okay, so uh, first thing, if this is your path, we want to talk about energy, okay? And that means we want to talk about work being done. So uh, what we asked is, okay, let's pick a point on the path. And let's look at the delta S and the F grab in the neighborhood of that point. So here's a delta S vector. Okay, now the tip kind of got obliterated by the point. And this point really has nothing to do with the tip of that vector. Uh, it's totally independent. It just turned out that that point turned out to be near the tip of where that vector was. We'll talk about that point later. Okay. So you have your delta S and your F grab, and you want to calculate uh, something about the work. Okay. So how do you calculate the work if you know your force vector and your delta S vector? Well, you do the dot product. It's F dot delta S. That's it. Assuming you have a constant force and a constant delta S. So how do we calculate F delta S? How do we visualize it? Well, it's just F parallel times delta S. And F parallel is the projection of F on delta S. Now we've been over that, so we have to understand this. Um, in general, I don't have a lot of room here. Let's see if I can squeeze it in, though. If we have a vector V and a vector W, we project V onto W, and the result we get is the projection, I won't write all the subscripts, but it's the projection of V onto W, and that's your V parallel. That's the component of V parallel to W. component of V parallel to W. You also have the component of V perpendicular to W, which would be the vector from here to here. Right? So you have V perpendicular, and as was you know, discussed here, same idea. V perpendicular, well, V parallel, your projection, plus your V perpendicular equals your V vector, so V perpendicular equals V minus V parallel, or V minus the projection. Very, very important idea. Um, so, 
So, in application to work, you're multiplying your V parallel by the magnitude, magnitude of V parallel. Well, actually, you're multiplying V parallel by W, and V parallel might be in the same direction or the opposite direction of W. The dot product takes care of that. It's in the opposite direction. The angle theta between the two vectors is greater than 90 degrees. The cosine's going to give you a negative. <coughs> in this case, with this picture and the picture here, it's pretty clear that uh, the angle here is a little less than 90 degrees because uh, this is toward the center and this is a little bit below the line perpendicular to that and so forth. Um, so this angle is less than 90 degrees. Uh, the F graph parallel component is in the direction of your delta S and the work done by gravity is positive. Now we ask, okay, show me a point where the work would be negative. And got a real good response there. Okay, out here, here's your delta S, here's your F grav. A little hard to read, but that's what this says. And of course, both of these F grav vectors, worth mentioning, are aimed pretty much at the center of the circle, right? For both radial and the center of the Earth, this circle representing the Earth. Um, so in this case, your F grab parallel, you project back onto the direction, onto a line defined by your delta S vector, uh, and you get this. And it's in the opposite direction to delta S, so the work will end up being negative. This angle here is greater than 90 degrees, so the cosine is going to be negative, so the F grab parallel times delta S will be negative. Um, <coughs> what's this? saying about potential energy. Well, at this point, gravity is doing positive work. So what's happening to potential energy? Again, you know, people didn't instantly say, well, let's see, change in potential energy is equal and opposite to the work done by the conservative force, which is gravity. And gravity is doing positive work, so the conservative force is doing positive work, so the potential energy being equal and opposite will have a negative change change in potential energy being equal and opposite to the work done by the, net force, by the conservative force. Uh, the change in potential energy would be negative, meaning your potential energy is decreasing at this point. At this point, well, work, uh, negative work is being done, so the change in potential energy will be equal and opposite to the work done. So the change in potential energy uh, would be positive. So potential energy is increasing here, decreasing here, for all those reasons which you really want to be able to visualize and incorporate. Then I ask, okay, show me the point <coughs> where the potential energy is a minimum. Well, read this point here, and that's just about where I would have drawn it. It's coincidentally pretty close to the point of this vector, but that's just coincidence. It has nothing to do with that vector. It's the point at which the direction of your gravitational force is perpendicular to your direction of motion so that the gravitational force projected onto your displacement is going to be zero. So your F parallel is going to be zero because F is completely perpendicular to your direction of motion. Um, now, if you know the work energy theorem, then you can relate that to the change in kinetic energy. Then, oh, good piece of chalk, just bit the dust. Still usable. Okay, so now find potential energy at the moon and near the atmosphere. Then apply the work energy theorem. There's still some work to be done and conceptual ideas to be uh, worked out. But <coughs> 
we want to find the change in potential energy from the moon to this point. Now the moon's really a lot further away than this, but we know that the uh, distance to this point is greater than the distance to this point. Okay, so we could call that like R1 and R2. So R1, which is the distance to the moon, is greater than R2, which is the distance out to the outer edge of our atmosphere. You can look up those distances. You can calculate the potential energy. Now, when I say find the potential energy, that's potential energy relative to infinity. And I also mentioned that you're not given a mass, but the mass doesn't matter because you're calculating the velocity. So just call the mass m. It'll divide out when you finally figure out the expression for the new velocity.